Okay, so you have to think about for the saturation key, what is the driver and what is going to be the driven object. So what controls the driven? So maybe this box here, the cube here, the cover of this cube may be the driver. So when the, whenever I move this, the spring have to squash and stretch, right? So definitely this is going to be my driven. So I'm just going to select my uh, spring here. And, uh, and in the attribute, what is going to be the attribute that is going to be the driven? You can use the scare as a driven. However, I don't recommend using the scare because whenever you try to make a squash, you can see that not just the length is squashing, but also the thickness of the the spring is uh, flattening out, right? It's uh, squashing too. So I want to maintain the volume of the spring. So instead of using the squash, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my polyhelix here. Go in here and there's going to be the height which I can use for the squash and stretch. So now if I select that and middle mouse and drag it, in the viewport, you can see that it's going to have that squash and stretch nicely without any uh, making the volume thinner or thicker. Okay, so I'll use that one for my driven. So it's not going to show up here. So what you have to do here is you have to select the polyhelix, the area that the input area that you want to put in, and then hit the low driven area here then you're going to see both one is going to be the translate rotate and scare which is going to be on the top here and the other one is going to be the part where what was uh, below so select that and select the height then what's going to be the driver you can set this as a driver however uh, if you set this maybe the translate X right because you're going to move this left and right you can use that as a driver however it's going to work with using this if you have just this movements it's going to go with the, it together with the squash and stretch however there are many times you can use the other axis like for example even by just moving this axis it's going to have more long range from the distance between those two and if you just set with this x-axis, it's not going to have any squash and stretch, even with this cube here. Because I, if I apply with my x here, it's not going to work with this one anymore. So I don't recommend just to add that as a driver. Instead, using that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the distance between those two cubes, no matter how I move both of those cubes I'm going to have I'm going to get the distance so what you can do here is just create a locator and parent it to this cube so select the locator the new locator that you created by the way I'm, I'm going to name this as a distance because this is only going to get the distance between those two select the locator shift select the cube here and hit P so no matter how I move this the locator is going to be parented to that. It's going to move together with that cube. Okay, next, what I'm going to do here is, because I want to have the distance between from here to here, what I have to do is I have to move my locator and stick it to the other cube here. So select this cube here, shift select the locator, and under the constraint menu, I'm going to use a point constraint. So go to the option and make sure that maintain offset is turned off. And then hit add. Once you do that, the locator is going to stick with the other cube here. So you can see now, if you select the distance, you can see that the translate X is going to be set to 6. And this is going to be the distance. No matter how you move this one, you can move it far away. You're going to get the distance from 
from here to here. Not just this one, even if I move this one here to the back, you can see that the locator translate x is increasing. Yeah, the reason why is because this actually this locator is stick to this cube, however, it is also parented to this other cube here. So it's going to uh, measure from here to what however you move here. So yeah, you can get the distance from by using the translate x. So I will undo this and then uh, put my driver as my locator here, the distance locator. I'm just selecting the locator and put that distance locator as my driver. And translate x is the distance, so I'm going to click that one and set a key. And then just move one of your cube here. It doesn't matter, you can move that one or this one. I think, yeah, it's better to move this one for now because right now, it's not and and before we move on, why don't we parent this uh, to here? Okay, so select the spring, shift, select the cube here, and hit P. So now, whenever I move my cube, the spring is going to follow this cube. And next, what I'm going to do is, whenever I move this one, I want this part to stick to the other cube here. So just move it how how you want select the helix and just select the height and middle mouse and drag it so that it's going to match up with that di distance and once you do that hit key so from here to here i'm going to have the squash and stretch however as you can see if i move farther it's going to not it's going to have the range limited from here to here right i don't want that limitation i want limitless uh, movements on to the spring so what i can do here is uh, you have to open the graph editor and uh, try to adjust it from there 